Imagine if there was someone stupid enough out there that they injected anabolic steroids into their butt before looking to get seven to nine hours of sleep a night. Imagine if there was someone stupid enough to hide a little vial of growth hormone in the fridge at their mum and dad's house and hide it inside a tub of creatine and convince their parents that creatine needed to be refrigerated before aiming for seven to nine hours of sleep a night. This guy was that stupid. For so many people, when it comes to better fat loss, when it comes to better muscle growth, when it comes to better performance, the key ingredient, the key performance enhancing substance that they should be striving for is a good night of sleep. If sleep weren't a normal thing, it would be a banned substance. Every single wanker influencer online is talking about their morning routines. Hey guys, I wake up and have my green smoothie, then I meditate, then I get in the ice bath. I'm here telling you that none of that is really important compared to the benefits of a good night routine. And I'm about to share with you some of the most elite hacks that you can utilize in your life. And it's not gonna be one of those idiots that clearly has got no responsibilities in their life. Some 22 year old without kids that lives at home with their parents and doesn't know what it's like to live a real life. You know them people that say, oh, when you first wake up, don't drink coffee for 90 minutes because then your body's own systems can start to activate what world do you live in when you don't have coffee within the first 90 minutes? Not the same world as me, brother. This ain't a video about coffee, it's a video about sleep. So let's get on with it. If we rewind a little bit, all my life I've struggled with falling asleep and my recent diagnosis of having ADHD that I got last week kind of confirms as to why. And without even realizing it, over the past few years, I've been creating systems in my life that help me be more productive, be more efficient at my time, and of course, sleep better. Now, I wouldn't call myself the king of sleep. Although many of my friends have called me the king of sleep. Because throughout my 20s, I could do your finest line of Colombian marching powder, then go straight to sleep as soon as I heard the birds outside and the sun was coming up and I started pranging out and I was saying, lads, this ain't for me. Story time's gonna have to wait for another night. The main reason sleep is important for you lot is to do with your levels of testosterone. Now, there are three main reasons as to why your testosterone is gonna decline. Age, obesity, and sleep. Now, instead of obesity, we always seem to think of people being a lot bigger than us. So let's say adiposity. The amount of adiposity you have makes me sound a bit more professional. Now with age, there's not a lot we can do. And I know there's that geezer, Brian Johnson, whoever that's trying to live to 200, but I don't really think we can influence age. And although he might live longer than all of us, he's still gonna age. It's not like he's gonna get to 77 and they're gonna go, oh, actually you're 60. Not to mention, if you try and live the longest out of all your friends, you're just gonna have to watch every single person in your life die. You'd be the last one left. And if that doesn't sound like depression, I'm not sure what is. But the two other factors we can control, levels of adiposity or obesity and our sleep. These are factors we can influence and control. Now, this isn't me saying, hey guys, just sleep more and be less fat. Well, it kind of is, but that's not the purpose of this video. And also having higher levels of obesity can really mess up our sleep and increase chances of things like sleep apnea, where you get problems with your airways when you're breathing and when you're snoring, you stop breathing in the middle of your night and your girlfriend turns over to you and thinks you died in the middle of your sleep. Or your wife, or maybe even your boyfriend. I don't know what you're into. Maybe even a Thai bride or a lady boy. What a big boy. And when people put themselves in calorie deficits to lose fat, if you sleep deprive that person, you're gonna see more muscle loss to fat loss. These are all things that I've covered in my book called Not A Diet Book, but this isn't a sales pitch for that, all right? Sleep is the foundation that we should build on. So many of us are looking at fancy things to build before laying the foundations, but what things can we utilize in our life and get them off Amazon and have better sleep in a week? Well, let's get into it. I didn't, I didn't want to like this one, I really didn't. I kept seeing these bellends on social media wearing nasal strips and I was like, mate, have you forgotten to take something off your face, have you? You're recording content that potentially millions of people are gonna see and you've left a little nasal strip on. Maybe this is something they put into the video so that we see it in the comment, we go, oh, you're wearing your nasal strip and it actually boosts the comments and the algorithm. But I was thinking, why would you look like such a pleb in front of so many people? I was there at home thinking, I cannot wait to buy some of these, put them on, and just say they're useless. And the only reason you would wear one of these is to look like a grade A bellend. But you know what my response was? Shit! God damn it! Ugh. That's one in a million. One in a million. Who kicks a croc and lands it perfectly on top of a squat rack? Hello? I wasn't really aware how nasal strips worked, but it turns out there's a bit of like stiff plastic in it. And when you stick it to your nose, the plastic then wants to form its, its original shape and it pulls your nostrils open. Within maybe even 10 minutes of wearing the strip, I was getting stings in my nostrils from how much my airways had opened up. 
And anyone that knows anything about breathing knows that improving your levels of nose breathing is just gonna make everything better. So I slept for a month wearing a nasal strip every night and it improved my sleep quality. My missus said I was snoring less and I'll probably continue to wear nasal strips for a long time. But you will never catch me dead wearing these on camera for any other video. This video only. Because you just look like a grade A bellend. They're very cheap, you get them from Amazon. Another thing that I ordered online was hostage tape. Not that type of hostage. Any of you that know the work of James Nestor, who's been on Rogan, he's also actually been on my podcast as well, will know not so much the benefits of taping your mouth closed, but the issues with mouth breathing. You see, our nasal passage prepares air for the lungs. Mouth breathing is not to be desired in sport, the performance world, or everyday life. And as far as nasal strips, I'm a fan, but as far as mouth taping, I don't know if I could do this every day for the rest of my life. There's something quite gimpish about laying there in bed next to your missus and going, night babe. Not to mention the other night, I was taped up and tried to have the conversation of whether or not we'd let the dog out to have a piss before bed. For some people, this is a game changer. For me, it's a little bit over expensive for what you get. And call me weird. There's just something I'm not mad about when it comes to taping my bloody mouth closed before going to bed every night for the rest of my life. My next advice to get better sleep would be to never get a dog. Eye masks. Keeping light out is really, really important. This is a brand called Alaska Bear. You get them on Amazon. They're really cheap and they're really comfortable. Do not underestimate the impact of a good eye mask. I buy these for a lot of my friends because they're not very expensive. Whether on a plane, whether at home, blocking light out. I don't sleep without one and I'm a diva. Another non-negotiable is the temperature of the room. If you have air conditioning, make it cool. If you don't have the privilege of air conditioning, maybe a fan, especially those dudes watching. Getting hot is one way to ruin a night's sleep. And I know it's gonna be an ongoing issue with the misses. They're always cold, you're always hot. This is the way the world is. Let's talk about supplementation. When it comes to sleep, I've tried everything. CBD, magnesium, transdermal magnesium, where you rub it on your skin. The two supplements that I like, which again are kind of from Andrew Huberman Sleep Stack, magnesium three and eight and glycine. Now I'll warn you, glycine will give you crazy dreams. 1000 milligrams of glycine and I take 2000 milligrams of magnesium three and eight, about a half hour before bed. Again, if you want a link to these, I'm not gonna provide them. I'm not an affiliate marketer. That's not how I do social media. Google it yourself, find it from your own place. But stacking these two together over the last few years has probably been the best supplement stack that I've ever used for sleep. When I wake up in the morning, I tell my whoop band what I've supplemented with the day before, whether it's magnesium, whether I put a nasal strip on, and I use the data from the whoop band to balance that with my anecdotal sense of whether or not it improved my sleep. So I've got a bit of data from the whoop band. I've also got a bit of data from how I feel the next day. Out of that, over the last few years, these are just the two supplements I'd recommend. I'm gonna tell you my biggest hack that I use to get better quality of sleep. And my mind is always racing when I go to bed at night. It's like ping, 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 thinking about different things. And if I lay in bed or go to bed early, it's just an overthinking nightmare. So what I use is podcasts. Not many people realize that when you're watching a podcast, you can click on the podcast timer and I often always select 15 minutes. So now I lay in bed listening to a podcast and this is just gonna magically shut off after 15 minutes. The majority of the time I fall asleep before the podcast has ended. Now this is a difficult one if you've got a partner in bed, especially if they're not into the same things that you are. But me personally, putting an episode of Joe Rogan on 15 minutes before bed puts me to sleep like a baby, which makes it easier to go to bed on a set bedtime. So whatever time I have to wake up the next day, I aim to get seven to nine hours before that. And you put yourself in bed early, you wear the eye mask, I've got a nasal strip on. Sometimes I've got mouth ache, I've taken my sleep supplements, I put a podcast timer on for 15 minutes. And guess what? If I haven't fallen asleep in 15 minutes, I just put it on again. I think maybe twice a year do I make it past the half hour mark. If you implement these stages with your sleep, and these aren't ones that are privileged, you can do these if you have kids, you can do these if you've got responsibilities, you could do these if you've got a dog that wakes you up at six o'clock in the morning by biting your toes under the bed covers. And these are cheap and easy to implement. So I recommend you all become your very best known scientists and implement these with your lifestyle to see whether or not they benefit. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There is gonna be a floating head here. If you click on that, you can subscribe. If you don't want to, over on this side, there's gonna be a video about whether or not you should be supplementing creatine. And if you found the sleep video useful, you're gonna find this one incredibly useful. Thank you for watching.